Welcome everyone to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. Our mission here at the university is to enrich people's lives personally and professionally, and the Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Now, if you're joining us for the Profit Break for the first time, welcome, we are glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving your profitability. Always love when we're fortunate enough to have in-studio guests, and today we have a VIP in the house. We have a U.S. Olympian, Mr. Johnny Quinn. Johnny was a member of the four-man Olympic bobsled team at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. He, he's traveled the world for Team USA, competing in Austria, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Russia, Switzerland, just to name a few. Now, before becoming an Olympian, he also played in both the NFL and the CFL. In fact, he is only the third person ever to play in the NFL and then go on to compete in the Winter Olympics. Quite an achievement. The other two people to accomplish this milestone were Jeremy Bloom and Herschel Walker. Now, he's the author of what I am predicting will be a bestseller, Push, Breaking Through the Barriers, in fact, folks, at the end of today's show, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can get a free copy of Johnny's book. But for now, let's welcome our guest, Mr. Johnny Quinn. Johnny, welcome, sir. Bart, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it is a pleasure. Welcome to the campus. Glad you get, get to be here. So let's start off with there's quite a commitment to being an Olympian, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. In fact, you know, most folks aren't willing to make that, uh, uh, that kind of effort and sacrifice. How is that experience, how does that apply to you and to all of us, really, to life in the marketplace. Yeah, you know, everything you do in sport, the Olympics, professional football, everything matters because things come down to hundreds of a second in the Olympics or even inches in football. You, you see that in some of the playoff games that we watched. And what I realized is in a sports setting at the highest level, Bart, you have a team made up of people who have different backgrounds, different belief systems, different personalities all coming together for one common goal, which is what I see in the marketplace and the different industries is that how do we work together for the common good? And so I saw that synergy early on in athletics transitioning into the marketplace. Yeah. Now, uh, I've had an opportunity to read your book. I told you it's a great story, a lot of adversity, a lot of things you've overcome. I know you're going to share a lot more of that when you're with us at uh, Bull Expo in June in Vegas. We're looking forward to that. But I know that you spent some time talking about the importance of a daily routine. Walk through a little bit about what that means and why does it even matter? Yeah, I, I got this concept from a guy by the name of Darren Hardy, and he talked about in his book called The Compound Effect, having these bookends. In, in a bookend, you are starting your morning, and then the other bookend would be in your evening. And what you do with those bookends matter. And Bart, here's what I realized. As I studied successful people, men and women in sport and business, who they find a way to get the job done with the current resources available, what I realized, Bart, is that a lot of these people have routines. They have these daily routines. They're intentional with what they do first, right when they get up in the morning, and what they do before they go to bed. And so I've implemented these daily routines, and here's what I've seen. I've seen consistency, right? I've seen opportunity, and I've seen exponential growth because I'm intentional with the routine. So I'd encourage all of our listeners, do you have a routine, a daily routine that you can follow? Yeah, that's amazing. That's great insight because we often think about successful people don't need a routine. It's the people that are tr looking for that success or looking for things that, and it's really what you're sharing with us is that, you know, everyone needs that routine in order to achieve that success. Yeah, we really do. And, yeah. you know, if, if you want to kind of give a sneak peek, if you want to dive into that, I actually list my routine on my website. I'm sure we'll share it later, but <laughs> johnnyquinnusa.com. You click on articles, but I have it time stamped so you can literally see what I do every morning. Hey, it might work for you, it might not, but it'll give you a it'll give you a draft that people can work off of so you can build your routine. Yeah. Well, after the show, I'd like to introduce you to your brother, Gerald, on our team, who is, <laughs> who is just a, a, a magnificent at, at doing that, and I need to get a, a little better there. So I don't want to spoil a lot about the book yeah. uh, and about your session, but you obviously have had some barriers, yes. right? You've had some, some adversity you've overcome. So how do we, for, for us what, regular folks, not Olympic athletes and not NFL and CFL players, how do we identify those barriers that might be holding us back? Yeah, you know, when I got cut in professional football, so I entered the NFL at 22 years old, Bart, it was a dream come true. But by age 26, 
I'd been cut three times, I lost $2.6 million, and I blew out my knee. So here I am trying to figure out what, what is going on, right? Why is life so tough? You know, this isn't the way life's supposed to go. And, and what I realized is that setbacks, because we all have them, sport, business, relationship, doesn't matter. We, we've got these setbacks, these failures. What I realized, Bart, is that we can actually use these to springboard us forward. And I got to tell you, here I am, right, my first career as a pro football player, an absolute train wreck, three cuts and a blown out knee. But at age 30, when in the world of pro sports, they call 30 old to become a United States Olympian, right, to wear the red, white, and blue, to represent our country on the world's greatest stage athletically. It was incredible. And Bart, what that really, it, it let me, know, it gave me kind of the epiphany that, hey, these setbacks that we all have, that these adverse situations, we can actually use those to springboard us forward. So for those who join us today and, and, and don't want to wait until June to get some, some tips here, is there a healthy way to kind of nav navigate those setbacks? Because whether they're large or a $2.6 million contract or small that we go through every day in life, is there a healthy way to kind of navigate those? Yeah, one of the things I talk about, and I think this would be just a helpful diagnostic, is ultra performers, right? These are the men and women who find a way to get the job done with the resources available. They protect the content they consume. And so let me put it this way um, to our listeners. What are you watching? What are you reading? Who are you listening to? I've got great news. Every morning when, when we get out of bed, right, when you and I get out of bed, every, if you're watching, when you get out of bed, you get to choose the content you consume. And so if we want to talk about building a healthy daily routine, navigating some healthy diagnostics, let's be intentional on the content we're consuming. Yeah, that, that is powerful. And in, in this age of social media, yeah. there are so many things that can take that in a, in a not so healthy direction. Yeah. You know, let me, a thought on that with social media, and you're right, there's, I think we've all um, seen the potential downfalls in social media. Here's one thing I've noticed is that I can connect with, again, men and women in my industry who might be two, three, four steps down the road of life that I want to go. And I can read their blog. I can read their books. I can subscribe to their podcast. So the beauty about living in 2022 and the power of technology that we all have, Bart, is that it kind of gets rid of the excuse of, well, I don't know anybody. No, no, no. We get to choose who we follow on social media and the content we consume. Yeah. That, that is a good point. There is the healthy side. Yeah. And, and it's back to your original point of being intentional. Yes. Intentional about the content you consume. And I, I love what you said about how you make that choice in the morning. Yeah. You know, what you want to receive and how you want to receive it. That's, yeah, uh, yeah. that's great stuff. So w let's talk a minute for when things are going well. Let's say, you know, it's often said that, the, you know, the toughest thing about momentum is getting started. Yeah. But then when you're fortunate enough to do get it going, how do you keep momentum going? I mean, yeah. how do you keep that streak, that positive streak going? Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing I learned in sports is that, you never stay the same, right? Time's the great equalizer. You're either getting worse or you're getting better. And I got this concept by a guy by the name of James Clear. He wrote the book called Atomic Habits, which is a New York Times bestseller. I think it was on the bestseller list all last year. I mean, he sold millions of copies. And he talks about getting 1% better. So Bart, let's say you're knocking it out of the park, right? The revenue's coming in, you're seeing exponential growth, everybody's happy, right? All your team members are smiling at work. I mean, Things are rocking and rolling. Would you consider getting 1% better that day, and then the next day, and then the next day? And if you do that over time, you're going to see, you're going to be able to take that and continue to grow and see this exponential growth that we're all hoping for. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned James Clear in, in his book. Yeah. I actually subscribed to his newsletter, the, three, the 321. Yes, I'm Come, on it too. It comes all the time there. It's great. It and is. it's just a great example of that intentional content that you, to, to do that and keep that that momentum going there now you I, obviously you you're an, I know personally just from from the short time I've known you you're an avid reader yes. uh, and you often the folks that follow you recommend things for for us to, to engage in and you just did that of course with with atomic habits w w what are you currently involved in now what are a couple of things that that you would recommend that we take a take a dive into in this this environment yeah you know I became an avid reader about 10 years ago and it has just changed my perspective right it helps me Think Clear uh, helps me open up um, to new perspectives. There's a book that, that I read probably two years ago that has really impacted me. It's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry 
by John Mark Comer. Bart, there's no doubt in this digital age that we live in, we're advertised, you know, I mean, we are just getting marketed to left and right. Can we slow down? And, and the way John Mark Comer unpacks it in this book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry was fantastic. And so that's one of my top reads. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm going to write that one down. Please I, do. I'm not, yeah. I've not heard of that one, and I'm certainly going to, because we all could slow down a little yes. bit and be yes. still. Yes. It'd be healthy. So let's lighten up a little bit. We talked about some heavy topics, <laughs> yeah. and you're going to, again, uh, in, in June, when you're with us for the super session, you're going to take a much deeper, deeper dive. But uh, in the book, again, I want to give too, minute, too much away, but there are a couple of, you, you have a lot of adversity, but there's also some fun stories yeah. and some lighter life. So you had a brief time with Aaron Rodgers yes. and a little bit of encounter. Aaron has been with us uh, before as well. Could you share with the audience kind of your time with Aaron and, and, and what you talk about in the book? Yeah, yeah. So I was in Green Bay in 08. Favre just retired the first time. We kept that football fans. Uh, Aaron just took over as a starter and a fantastic guy. I, I, you know, I remember stepping into the Green Bay Packer weight room. I was... You know, I mean, here I am, an undrafted free agent. I'm on my second contract. I was with the Buffalo Bills in 07. Here I'm in 08 with the Packers. Aaron's taking over as the starter. This is pre-MVP, pre-Super Bowl, pre, you know, what he's done. And I remember I'm in the weight room in the, of the Green Bay Packers. I just finished my workout, and I go to the protein area, and you open up the, the little, you know, fridge, and Bart, I pull out a protein, <laughs> And about 20 of the proteins fall out. Now, thankfully, they were all, you know, had their lids on. But I, you want to talk about feeling embarrassed. I was mortified. Here I am, the new guy, you know, on the Packers, yeah. knocking off all the proteins in, in the weight room. And I remember Aaron, you know, he saw it, probably chuckled a little bit, but came over and helped me clean the proteins up. Huh, what a solid guy. Yeah. So we hit it off. Um, I've got a, a background playing Halo. He was a Halo player, so we, uh, we, we played a nice amount of Halo together. And uh, we've stayed connected ever since. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to be a fly on the wall to watch Johnny and Aaron play Halo, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. video games there. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Johnny, as we're wrapping up for today, I can't let you leave the studio without, speaking of being, being weight and strong, I can't leave the studio without sharing the story that gave you kind of that uh, 15 minutes of worldwide fame yeah. around the Olympics. You've got to share with our listeners, because many may not know, it was back in 2014, the Sochi bathroom story. Yes. Yeah, so here I am. We just walked in opening ceremonies. It's the next day, and I'm taking a shower, and Bart, I, I cannot get out of the shower, right? I, 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 I'm at the bathroom door, and I'm trying, you know, I'm push, pull, turn, right, left, and the door is locked. And my teammate was in the weight room at the time, so here I am by myself. And in the, in the Olympic Village in Russia, our rooms run parallel to a hallway. And so I'm kind of banging on some things, see if somebody's there to help render some aid. And I get to the door, and I hit it, and it cracks. And so I hit it a little bit more, and my fist, Bart, goes right through the door. And so, uh, you know, I, I break the door down, I get out, and I get dressed. And Bart, I look back at the bathroom door, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, the United States Olympic Committee. I'm going to be in trouble by the USOC. So I take a picture. I go down. I show the USOC. I said, hey, I ran into a problem with my door. I don't want you to think there was some horseplay. Can we get it fixed? And I posted it on social media. And in 24 hours, it received 28,000 retweets seen by 10 million people across the world. Bart, who knew a door in Russia yeah. would have created so much excitement? I should have kept some of the door. I didn't know. I should have. Yeah. <laughs> well, instead of buying a door that you thought you were yeah. going to have to pay for, yeah, you yeah. ended up, uh, yeah, and I remember seeing the news stories and the Today Show and yeah. all, all that went with yeah, it fine. there. Uh, it's good. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for carving out a few minutes. We know you're busy. You've got a lot of things going on around the country. Uh, we wish you continued success. And most importantly, we look forward to having you join us for the Super Session in, uh, in June. Bart, I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. And if you haven't got registered yet, make sure we see you in June. You're going to love my Super Session. Awesome. Thanks, Johnny. Well, folks, remember, if you'd like to learn more on how to think like an Olympian and develop that champion's mindset, Johnny's going to be leading our Super Session in Las Vegas this June. Now, the Super Session's taking place on Monday, June 27th, and is an expanded three-hour session live with Johnny. So he's going to do his first 90 minutes of his motivational keynote, and then you're going to come back and learn a whole bunch about how to put it into practice with an action plan. Plus, every attendee is going to leave with a free copy of Johnny's book, Push, breaking through the barriers. Spots are limited. Now, we only have room for 150 people for this exclusive session with Johnny. You can register right now. Go to bpaa.com and click on the Bowl Expo tab. There's no fee for this. It's all part of your register, uh, full registration. 
So folks, as we wrap up another edition of the Bowling University Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next week, same time for another great episode. If you have any question about today's show or would like additional information, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24 seven by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. The Profit Break is now available when you want it and we have new episodes premiering every month. Until then, I'm Bart Berger and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.